Hello and welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC. We have Craig Burley and Chaka Hislop alongside myself, Kay Murray, in the studio. We've also got Don Hutchison and Mark Ogden joining us as well. As you can imagine, we'll be talking a lot about football transfers tonight and we're going to start with the news of Andre Onana edging ever closer, it would appear, to Manchester United. Mark Ogden, what more can you tell us about the latest situation here? Well, United have upped their bid today to 50 million euros. I think it's still a little bit short of what Inter want. I think Inter are looking for about 60 million euros. But the latest I've had from United is that talks are progressing positively. So that's good news for United. Obviously, they haven't got a goalkeeper right now. I certainly uh, what, what they would class as a number one because David De Gea's contract expired last week. So Anana, for me, he's a goalkeeper that plays more to the Ten Hag style, plays out from the back. Ten Hag knows him from Ajax. So I think if Anana gets done, which I think it will do, that signals the end for De Gea because I don't see De Gea coming back as a number two or as an option that is mean, totally different to Anana. So I think Anana signals a new way forward from Man United and Ten Hag's team. Don, you saw a lot of him at Inter. How highly do you rate him as a goalkeeper? OK, he's up there with the very best. Um, when you're talking about, as, as Mark said there, Ten Hag style and want to play it from the back, there's not many better. I'd probably rank him alongside Edison with the ball at his feet. Um, he starts a lot of playoff. Um, his, his range of passing is very good. He's very comfortable dropping balls into front men. His range of pass, whether he's going left, right, his left foot, right foot is very, very good. And he's ultra confident. He's a very, very good goalkeeper in his own right. But with the ball at his feet, he is very special. Looking forward to seeing him here, Shaka? I do. Um, listen, I've not seen as much as, of him as, as, as Don has, certainly. But everything I've seen, I've, I've been impressed with. And, and while Stevie is, is keen to point out, Stevie in particular, keen to point out that particularly in Champions League final, with the ball at his feet, he did make a couple of errors. And, and Stevie's right. But at, at no point did, did he recoil. At no point did he stop doing what, what was asked of him. I think the, uh, the side to Onana that I was most impressed with, particularly in that final, is, is a sense of leadership, a sense of presence that I think Manchester United have missed in, in, in that position. David De Gea has been an incredible shot stopper over the years. But the one thing, uh, the one knock against his game, even when he was at his best, is that he was not the kind of leader that I think Manchester United needed at, in, in that position. Performance, I have no problem with. Leadership, I, I think there was a little bit to be wanted. I think Onana ticks both those boxes. He's got an aura, an aura about him, hasn't mm. he? If, if you're, I, I think the De Gea, I, I don't, I think the way it's been handled has been a bit of a mess all round. But, but I do think ultimately the right decision has been made in the end for both parties to move on. Uh, good servant to the club, but I think time for De Gea to move on and they're looking for something a little different or maybe a lot different, and Anana gives him that. It's just that, that both physical and mental aura he gives behind. And I tell you what, Don mentioned Anderson there, and Shaka mentioned the mistakes. He knows he's going to make the odd mistake, but he's so confident in his own ability with the ball at his feet, he's going to continue to play out from the back. And we saw it time after time in the Champions League. So if you're, if you're a United defender next year and this deal goes through, you better be on your tippy toes when he's on the ball because you might be getting it in a position that you don't expect. And that's the kind of goalkeeper he is. Uh, and yes, he's very good as a goalkeeper as well because that is important. So I actually think this is quite an exciting signing if it goes through. I mean, I know we keep talking about the striking position and it is hugely important, but we, I can't overemphasize, and I don't believe I'm saying this with a goalkeeper sat here. <laughs> it is and has been and always will be such an important position, particularly now, the way the game is played. And, uh, Craig, Craig touched on something there, and, and this is how the De Gea situation was handled. And yes, there are conflicting reports about the contract and who signed and who didn't sign and, and whatnot, but regardless of, of what you think of De Gea, regardless of what you think of, of, of his wages, I, I just think that it was handled so poorly for somebody who'd been at Manchester United, a club like Manchester United, for as, as long as David De Gea has been. And now we'll... The tr Full story, I guess, will come out in, in, in some time as to, as to exactly what happened. But I, I, I just feel that it, it, it has left a, a bad taste in, in a lot of people's mouths around this. When we, when we were on uh, earlier this week, Mark was talking about United looking for cheap options. And probably the cheapest of those options would be to resign David De Gea. I, that, as much as it, it may be an option, it may be a cheap option, I, I just think 
um, in, in terms of how everything was, was handled, everything seems to have been managed, it, it, it just was not realistic. I, I cannot imagine United going back to, to David De Gea in, in this fashion. I can't imagine David De Gea accept, accepting it. I can't imagine that we're having this conversation about Manchester United, who have for years done business best in English football. When it comes to that situation, are there any updates then, Mark? Well, no, well, De Gea got married at the weekend, so he's away on his honeymoon right now, so don't, there's no rush on his part. But United are saying that they still hope to talk to De Gea face to face. But I, I think that's just a PR stunt. I think that is basically a nice PR move to say that they're still, they've still got an option with De Gea. But once they sign a goalkeeper, they'll move on. I mean, it, the issue is if they don't sign a nine and they have to go back to, to plan B, which would be De Gea, they have to keep the option open. But as soon as they get a keeper in, it doesn't make sense that they have a nine and De Gea in the squad because they're two completely different goalkeepers. So you, if you have. Ten Hag's team playing one way with Anana, playing with the, you know a, a guy that plays the ball at his feet, the defence can move higher up the pitch. Why would you then go to a number two who plays completely the opposite way and can't play with the ball at his feet? So I just think it's it's United covering the bases, and as soon as Anana gets done, then De Gea will be consigned to the past. And I think you know we're already getting to that stage anyway. His contract's been expired, but still, they're just leaving the door open just for now. But as soon as you get a keeper in, I think the door will close. Oggy, just, just to be clear, Oggy is using a tin of beans as his microphone. <laughs> We're well, having some I, microphone issues, Oggy, and so you need I, to get... I just thought Oggy was sitting in, in, well, in the toilet. I, I, well, just, I mean, I didn't, I didn't want to use that one. Well, I'm right. just saying, it's just well, kind of what it sounds. Did David De Gea get married? Well, did David De Gea get married at the weekend? Or, and did, have we checked? Have both parties signed the contract? I thought Oggy was going somewhere with that. He got married at the weekend. I but, wasn't but, quite I, sure where we going I, with that. I couldn't resist that. <laughs> David Actually, better I've decided in. against David that. David better get in there and check it. <laughs> oh, the missus hasn't signed the deal. Oh, my... Ah, uh, 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 no. Mike. OK, let's go back to Andrea Nana. Don's mic's a little bit better right now. Where does he rank in terms of Premier League goalkeepers then, now that he's coming to the Premier League, Don? Potentially. Uh, yeah, I think he'd rank up there. It might take him a little time to settle, of course. Um, and, I, and I think Shaka and Craig are right in terms of when you've got a goalkeeper that wants to play it from the back and obsessed with playing off from the back, because that's one of his strengths, he's going to make one or two mistakes. But I wouldn't dwell on the mistakes, because Shaka called it right before when he does make, make a mistake. He doesn't then shy away from trying to risk your pass again. But, you know, I'd, I'd rank them up there with Alisson, definitely Edison. Um, Alisson's completely different in terms of... I think he's ahead of him in terms of his goalkeeping skills. But, you know, it's the Ten Hag way, isn't it? And I think for Man United, I think for Ten Hag, with De Gea being there, I think it's about 12 years. I think they need something fresh. I think that De Gea has probably played himself out of a new contract the last couple of months of the season when his form wasn't great, especially in Europe. So I think I, I think for, for Ten Hag, I think for the players and more so, I think for the fans, even though they obviously really respect it and rate De Gea's goalkeeping skills and how long he was there, he's obviously, you know, he'll go down as a little bit of a club legend in terms of the length. But I think you're, you're getting a massive upgrade, I think, in an honour. If Man United get this deal done, I don't think there'll be any room for an honour and De Gea. I think the Gundogan uh, Shinner in the FA Cup final might have mm. might have sealed the deal if it was a, if, there, if there was any doubt. First goal was fantastic. The second one was a head scratcher, wasn't it, yeah. from outside the box? And there was a little bit too many of them just just creeping in. I kind of it kind of reminds me in a way towards the end of a Hugo Lloris at Tottenham. Hugo Lloris who's you know, hasn't won the Champions League, to my knowledge, but has won the World Cup. You think, well, you know, you're criticising Hugo Lloris, but I think most of us on this panel have often sat and talked and thought, well, he just always seems to have a mistake in him, Lloris, at key moments. And that's kind of kind of how it was starting to feel with David De Gea again. All that great work was sort of superseded by the odd bad moment and big moments. So I, I absolutely think it's the right thing to do now. The other argument is here, this 50, potential 50 million, the Mason Mount money, it all comes back to this, how much more is going to be left in the pot, if any, for, for others. Yeah, I mean, potentially a great goalkeeper, potentially a very workmanlike, skillful, flexible, adaptable midfielder. But every time I'm on this show and we're talking Man United, the elephant in the room will not go away. It, it, it just won't, and I'm intrigued by this story over. And we've got what? How long to the end of the transfer? I can't. I don't know how long to the end of the transfer. It's too long. Still a fair amount of time for United to do business, but it's whether 
they're going to have, be able to have the budget, sell players, get some money in. I, I, I don't know. It's a, I'd love to be in the office with Ten Hag seeing if there was the steam coming out his ears. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.